Thank you for tuning in to Hacks and Hobbies with your host, Junaid. In season two of Hacks and Hobbies, we're visited by our amazing guests coming from all walks of life who want to learn their story, their struggles, and their journey on how they got to where they are today. So stick around. In this episode, I get to speak with Michael Whitlow. He owns and operates Vet Builder. He's a former Marine, or he's a Marine Corps. Not only, I don't know, they say you're always a Marine, but he also studied culinary arts, meaning he cooked food for a living, if that's what it means. Anyway, um, I met Michael Whitlow through LinkedIn, through our awesome champions group that Donny Donnie Boyvin set up and we've been chatting back and forth and I was like hey I'm looking for some guests he's like I'll give it a shot so we had some conversations over the phone and I was like we totally kicked it off and um it's like where have you been all my life <laughs> so anyhow, I, I'm happy to have Michael uh come on the podcast I'm 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 and here he is, Michael. Thank you so much for oh. coming on to the podcast. Well, thank you, thank you. I appreciate it, and uh, thanks for the great intro. Um, it's welcome. a new experience. We'll put it that way. <laughs> yeah, man. And so talking on the phone and mm-hmm. talking on the microphone, it's it's almost the same because technically a phone has a microphone, right. but here we can relive this moment over and over again. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry to say, right? <laughs> I don't know, man. Um, it's it's uh, sometimes you know you get to catch your mistakes. You get to catch um, how you talk to people. It's right. it's pretty it's pretty neat. I mean, um, yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, it's like some of the I'll be listening to some of my older episodes, and I'm like, hmm, I could have done that better. Oh. He was telling me all what I was asking. I just wasn't paying attention. Yeah, you weren't um, listening. <laughs> I was listening. I'm just trying to pay. Uh, you know, it's it's uh, our minds are so uh, moving so fast. It's it's crazy. Well, it's hard. It's hard for me because normally, if I'm talking on the phone, I've got my earbud earpods on, and I'm walking around and yeah. I'm having to sit here with my my face stuck to a microphone um <laughs> there's got to be a better way <laughs> i mean i feel like you know eddie Mer- freddie mercury you know singing Bohemian <laughs> rhapsody here well you won't get as much of a workout as as uh singing Bohemian rhapsody <laughs> oh, there's no doubt no doubt at all it's just it's an interesting dynamic because yeah. when people started asking me to be on podcast i thought well why would why would I be one of those guys where people would actually want to sit down and listen to me? And uh, mm-hmm. you know, maybe after the the second one, which is this, we'll uh, they'll go, yeah, Mike, you know, hang that, hang your hat someplace else, brother. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I know what you mean, man. That interesting. <laughs> I don't I don't think that's the case because you know there's almost eight billion, maybe seven and a half billion people in this world, and every right. single person has an amazing story. And no two people travel the same path. So we're all very unique in our own own way. It's it's pretty amazing. Well, unique doesn't always translate into interesting. I so. didn't say it has to. <laughs> <laughs> it's out there. Somebody. All you need is one, right? You Somebody just need one, man. You just need one. Absolutely. And, and uh, what's funny is uh, talking about unique, I remember – at least my friend, so when I was in high school, my one of my friends used to call me unique. I was like, mm-hmm. why would you, like, he's like, yeah, that's your nickname, man. I was like, um, okay. <laughs> You're a unique you, person. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So anyways, um, so here at Hacks and Hobbies, uh, we like to get into our hobbies, get into different life hacks that, uh, you know, I've come to appreciate. and. It's it's a funny journey, like oh, what I've taken to to the pot to coming around with the podcast. Anyways, it all it all started with me documenting about my beekeeping hobby, and then it turned into 
well, let me find out what other people are doing or in this world. I mean, there's a lot of them. And yeah. uh, everybody's had a different journey and they've got a lesson, you know, they've gone through things that have, that has taught them what not to do. Uh, right. so, like my mentor says uh, in beekeeping class, an experienced person or a beekeeper will have a long list of things, what not to do. Yeah, like not get stung. Exactly. Don't get stung, but you will yeah. get stung. <laughs> I, I don't think that's cool. No, it's not cool. But um, so talk about stinging, just mm-hmm. quick facts. So there's two types of stinging. You can get half stung where the mm-hmm. bee doesn't die. And she's just warning you like, hey, right. watch out. <laughs> and then there's a full stung. And I don't, I don't think I've been full stung before. Really? I don't think so. Because I, I wear gloves when I'm, I'm out there. so. Half stung a couple of times, I think. Yeah, see, that doesn't, you know, it's cool that people do that, but that doesn't, no, no, I don't like to be stung by anything, whether it's half or not, because I I I literally don't know the difference. I agree. It just sucks. I don't, I don't, I don't like being stung either, but you know, um, sometimes. And yet you're a beekeeper. Yeah. (laughs) Sometimes when you're a little aggressive or a little, you know, because they can sense your feeling, like animals right right? they can sense what you're feeling they know exactly when you're when you're afraid and when they can start chasing you like dogs and so the bees are the same way so you have to be super calm and composed and and have a control over your own person before you can go control others well you know what the fantastic part about that is is i can watch you do that from like a block There you go. You can <laughs> apply I'll take away. honey because it's delicious. Yes. You're getting half stung. <laughs> yes, right. So now it's so for the one the year and a half that I've been doing uh, beekeeping, mm-hmm. my second year, it's I've only been stung once. Really? Yeah. Well, then you must be very calm and collected because <laughs> I think that if I walked up to it, they would see just absolute. Okay, go sting that guy because because <laughs> he's not calm. <laughs> that's too funny well no they're pretty good they're pretty good about it all right man so what i like to hear and hear is you know I, so talking about journeys and how you get here and you know what what inspired you to be doing what you're doing and and if what you're doing is what you love so there's a lot of the times there's versions of stories, like especially when, when I'm talking to speakers and authors, they usually have like a blurb on their on their book and then that's a story that they tell everybody. But then I always look for, you know, what's the version of your journey that no one's heard before? So the, what would that be for you? The version, I, I think part of it is, is up until recently, I, w- I, was, I was always operating in the background. I was never interested in, in sort of coming up and, and being in that segment. So I, I think that when we talk about our life's journeys and, and all that kind of good stuff and metaphysics and, you know, all that kind of quick crap, um, I think ultimately you're the, the person you are, you're ultimately created by your environment and whether you've had an environment based on survival or an environment based on, resources i think that we we all come down the, the same road but there is definitely a crossroads where it changes you know yeah yeah it's you know it's it, it's it's just interesting it's when you start thinking about when somebody wants to actually listen to what you're saying and and being sort of at the the top of my career path um it's it's nice to sort of get the recognition. I mean, not you know, I'm not winning awards type of thing, but it's nice when someone says, especially when you're out in there, when you're in their house, like, wow, that yeah. looks really nice. Um, yeah. How I got here, you know, it's 30 years of being in the service industry. The sort of jobs that no one wants, or, or you know, entry level jobs. I got re- really really good at that. Mm-hmm. And always enjoyed working with my hands. No college per se, and uh, you just what finally happened was is I finally stuck with something. Yeah. You know? And that's, and that's where the, the change actually started to happen. Okay. We're going to do this. We're going to get better at this and hopefully be successful at it. And uh, early on we weren't so successful <laughs> to say the least. <laughs> yeah. 
I totally get it, man. Uh, you you've got to go through those those motions to figure it out, right? Okay, this is stay away from this. Do this right. Get all those ducks in a row, kind of thing. Absolutely. Well, a lot's changed because yeah. being you know I'm not in an industry that that sort of goes to big conferences all the time, and you know after doing some research on what we're doing. As far as influencers are concerned, there's there's a few in in my industry, mm. but there's there's still not that there's still not any real leadership, or if there is, I haven't found it, and I've looked. Mm. Um, so you, you know, you, you when we look at business nowadays, you know, I'm a, I'm a guy with two vans. We're doing fantastic. Everything is falling into place, but at the same time, doing research and and looking at how you scale up, you know, I found this whole internet thing. And mm -hmm. it completely changes the dynamics of how I was doing business and how I need to be doing business. And sort of at 48, you're like, Oh my God, I thought I was, <laughs> I thought I was done with it. <laughs> <laughs> but, but no, it's like, Oh my dude, you, you missed out on like the last 10 years because the internet was for cars and, and reading magazines. So. That's so true. The internet, man, it's a, it's a great invention. And uh, I think the first time I heard about internet marketing and people using the internet to market their businesses and whatnot was probably, I can't remember, maybe it was over 10, it was 10 years ago and this, and 10 years ago, this guy was like, yeah, 10 years ago, I started using the internet to market. It's like right. placing your ad, instead of placing your ad in the, in the, in the newspaper, you know, he started placing these ads on how to teach a bird, how to teach your your parrot how to talk, or how to teach um, your dog new tricks and stuff like that. The pioneers. The pioneers, right? So these guys are like, and they're talking about this. I'm like, wow, this is pretty revolutionary. And then and then you listen to some someone like Seth Godin, and he's like, yeah, I've been doing this for. He invented this. Right. Well, it was expensive back in the day too. Oh, I mean, yeah. I was on dial up and thank God there weren't our podcasts because I've been broke. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. No, you you absolutely like well that's when that's when we had the radio. You you had to you actually had to go in into a station. Yeah. And guest get guest uh, interviews and stuff like that. I didn't never made it. <laughs> <laughs> Me neither, man. I was like, wow, that's pretty fun. I listened to the radio and then I was always intrigued. Like when the movie came out with uh, Howard Stern, I'm like, wow, that's, that's really interesting. You just get to talk about what you feel. On the I mean, radio. We're, we're doing that right now. I we mean, are. we're exactly we're doing a conversation. Thing. Yeah. And unfortunately, or fortunately people are going to have to listen to it or will listen to it. You know, I apologize ahead of time. Yeah, guys. Um, if this is not for you, you can, go listen to a different podcast, but we're, we're here struck. We're basically looking, you know, when they say, what's the next best thing? This mm -hmm. is it. Like literally this is the best thing that's next. And if you're not in this right now and you said, Oh, I'm going to wait for the next best thing. Well, well, you're already missed the boat. You're already too late because there's no waiting for mm -hmm. a revolution to happen. Well, it's, it's literally happening now. And it's mm -hmm. interesting that a person that's only been delving into this for the past three years that, you know, you really, you either, if you're serious about this, you really need to go and start getting things done and learning things. Like yesterday I had, a, I was on a, I was on a call with uh, someone named Trish Lido and she does mm -hmm. social media. Now my social media game for where I'm at right now has been strong. I get, I have a great audience. My client base interacts with what we're doing, but in order to sort of grow my business or scale it to where I want to go, it just got to a point that's okay. I need to do something different and yeah. getting to that point and making that realization. I think that comes with experience coming and it comes where, you know, I know where my business model is and mm -hmm. we're at that point where we need to start doing something about it. Absolutely. Absolutely. You're right. You're hundred percent right. I say too many absolutely. You know, I, I, I did 
I did the same thing on my last, I did a podcast with Chris McPhee um, with Green Beret Media. And nice. I recently did, well, you, I, I tagged you on the soft opening. And yeah, I, I checked it out. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was, I, yes, I absolutely too much. And, and also, you know, being a, I am a contractor and I am a <laughs> So my language, you know, I really have to tone that down. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, so we're working on that right now. Yeah, so my team is working literally on. getting bit constantly. Completely, <laughs> totally, utterly, perfectly, entirely. I'm just looking up some synonyms for absolutely because. Perfect, to- great, awesome. Yeah. <laughs> um, my thing is I say awesome way too many times. Well, I'm a child. I'm a I'm a product of of the '80s. You know, yeah. everything was awesome. I, I still call everyone dude. Uh, I never grew out of that. Evidently. <laughs> well, it's also good because I, I I'm not very good with names, so dude or it really dude just works out perfectly, right? Absolutely. I know what you look like, but I can't place your name. Yeah, dude. Um, and and me growing up in California, I'd always say dude and. Gosh. Oh yeah. I mean, you California, you have to do that. You have to do that. <laughs> you know, but when we get to be our age, yeah. we sound like those old geezers, you know, I know. I'm going to start wearing my hat backwards again, you know, just to get <laughs> just back to the groove. A little cooler. Right. Uh, little, uh, covers yeah. the, the graying and, and the thinning hair. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. So, so that's, that's a pretty cool start of, of what your journey was. Mm-hmm. So um, you started, so I, I got to listen to your first podcast episode and, and, you know, you did an awesome job in, and, and, and talking about yourself and talking about, you know, where you come from mm-hmm. and where your values lie and yeah. what you're trying to do with, with uh, vetbuilder.com. Absolutely. And it's, it's really exciting to see, see that happening in front of your eyes. And mm-hmm. so, so tell me a little bit about, a little bit about the, uh, about that and um well that, that builder.com when we started five years ago was we started right out of the gate i had a full-time employee in a full and a van okay mm-hmm. i didn't start with my i mean i did start with myself but when yeah. we officially opened i had a full-time employee in a van and within five months i had another guy mm-hmm. and we rocked right up to within the first six months I did what well, I did over six figures not many mm-hmm. not much but I, did, I still did that and over the course of the last the next two years we rocketed up to I think 274 250 and then the last couple of years we've evened out about 200 um, and part of that is is not because the work's not there because it is it's just we're restoring two different properties we yeah. a lot of our resources were tied up locally within mm-hmm. the but when when I when I hired both of my guys, I I told both of them, look, we're going to do big things. Big things at that point was still national marketing. So when we got to a point where we were not working seven days a week and mm-hmm. slow down, and then also things started change. You know, learning about social media, learning mm-hmm. about the the, in, the income possibilities within my segment or my industry. And I thought, well, if I'm going to scale up, I can either throw five bands to the road and, and be successful, or I can go, well, with the amount of energy it's going to take to do this correctly so that I don't end up with five bands in my driveway. Mm-hmm. Why don't we look at the industry? Why don't we look at the coverage, look at competitors, look at franchises and find out that, well, there's an absolute need for a service company that is, trusted somebody that you know when they're going to come in the house they're going to do the right thing because i'm providing videos for everyone to see that yeah and then look at the market segment you you have to figure if home depot and a lowe's builds a a big box store in a location then they guarantee i can guarantee you that they can they can take someone like me on the, mm-hmm. the market's there if they think the market's there then i definitely do i definitely do so the, the homework was already done in a lot of areas. Yeah. But well, I mean, what do you do when you're, you, when you scaled up, you know, I'm a six figure company, we have uh, two full-time employees, two vans, a uh, brick and mortar location, uh, pretty decent internet presence. And, and where do you go from there? I mean, we're, we're at the point where we've been ready to scale up, but we, we haven't because of the logistics of it all. And where do you go from there? I mean, 
you're, you're a small six figure company. You've mm-hmm. got dreams and aspirations and, you know, limited resources. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just, I, you know, I, I don't know where these things go. So you have yeah. to spend a lot of time looking and researching. Absolutely. Or the word is downright straight up. Um, so where do you go? <laughs> so where do you go? Right. So you want to scale up and you want to grow, mm-hmm. but without having to have those five vans on the driveway. Right. Right. That's interesting. Well, you know, you look at the trades and you look at the industry. There's what tends to happen is, well, what happened with me? We'll, we'll just leave it at that. We, mm-hmm. we just, every year was more explosive growth contacts and a lot of information being done. And then I thought, well, you know, I'm, I'm giving this information out regularly. So why don't I just give it to everybody? And yeah. you create that. And it's not, I'm not going to say trust because it's, it's our work and it's the way that we communicate that, that mm-hmm. builds the trust. But at the same time, you, you have like this whole different world that you now have to contend with. Um, and it's, having a reputation built business or reputation based businesses is, is, is difficult nowadays because of the fact that anyone can be even the least or the, just a little bit unhappy and they can get around Facebook or they can get on Yelp or they can get yeah. on any of the platforms and give you a four star review. You know, that's sometimes you deserve it. Absolutely. But I think the difference is and the reason why I, I don't have any reviews that aren't four stars or A's I mean, we've across a half a dozen different platforms. We are at the top of our game in all of them. Mm-hmm. Is that because we knocked it out of the park every day? Absolutely not. We we're in remodeling. We're in people's houses. Things go wrong. You open up, you take a door out and find out the subfloor is rotten. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so you, you have, we went from a fun project to a, Oh my God, I gotta go buy, you know, two sets of tires kind of thing. It, it yeah. takes fun out of it. And the difference is, is when we don't have a hundred percent day and we don't, I mean, we do, it's mm-hmm. working outside 90 degrees, yeah. you know, it, it sometimes, sometimes shit just goes wrong. Oh but yeah. This is, I'm not an elephant in the room kind of guy, mm-hmm. you know, I say, look, I, I think we could have done a better job here. We're going to fix it. We're going to fix it on our dime. Uh, mm-hmm. I apologize for the inconvenience of having to be here longer, but so even the people that didn't like us because mm-hmm. they still felt like we didn't, we didn't fulfill what they, their expectations. We also bent over backwards to try to fix that. Yeah. And I think that's, that's also missing in a lot of the customer service industry or service industry jobs because it's, you know, they're so worried about the money, you know, and, and I understand that. Trust me, I pay my guys a salary, you know, it's over 50 grand a year you know, we have those two fans. So it's, it's the vet builder.com monster in its current state is, is, is very hungry. So it's, yeah. but you have to mitigate that and, or mitigate the, the client and, and the possibility of having that bad review. But then you also in the back of your mind, you have to be very, very realistic and go, okay, you know, I can't make everybody happy. I did my best to try, yeah, yeah. but I just couldn't do it. So, mm-hmm. You know, you apologize, you fix the job to where, where it is and it's, it's done right. It may not yeah. be to their preference or what they thought from a YouTube video, but yeah, <laughs> I mean, cause we have that. there's a whole network that, that feeds my industry and it's like, look, I can't build a deck in four hours. So <laughs> <laughs> no way Why don't you show the 50 guys in background actually doing all of the work. So yeah. this, you know, hour episode, it takes time. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. It, it does take time. Um, but that's, I mean, but that's where I'm at within that. Yeah. Wow. I know who to, who to thought some guy from uh, nowhere, <laughs> you know, but you know, the other part about it is, and, and, and as we, as we talk about it, or as I have talked about it, it's, there's a confidence level, you know, I'm a yeah. very, very confident person externally. Mm-hmm. But internally, you start to have that turmoil. It's like, okay, well, what if I fall on my face? You know, because I've gotten to the point now where I'm telling everybody, look, I'm looking to put a branch of of Mm vetbuilder.com everywhere. Yeah, it's it's the enterprise rent a car model. Um, 
which is just dominate a market. And it's sort of parasitic in that it's, it's being driven by other industries. So we won't be as paras- we won't be as parasite as parasitic. Yeah, parasitic. <laughs> just not there to help fix problems because essentially Absolutely. that's what you're doing, right? You're helping problems and you're creating solutions um, for people living in their homes because that's you know that's what that's what you're doing. It's amazing because I've got some problems in my house right now, and I, I'm like I, I look outside. Local. I'm local. Yeah, so this is this is a marketing opportunity for me to share my wares and charge you money. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> but but you think if you think about that at 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 just that level, mm-hmm. okay? You just met a guy that could solve your problems in your house. Yeah, and your neighbor has that problem, and your family has that problem. Uh, the people you work with have that same problem. So having that reputation or, or, or making sure that your, your paramount concern is reputation. Yeah. And you can see, and you can see how that spreads, you know, amp it up to a global scale and you know, things get interesting. <laughs> exactly. No, you're right. You're right, man. And people, and, and you're, you're in the prime space because people live in their homes and you're helping your, your, helping their homes be a better living space. Well, you know, it's that, and it's, it literally is a service that I can, that I have a service that I can sell or provide for anybody, Mm -hmm. literally anybody. If you live in a home and you flush a toilet, I will do and can have a solution to a problem. And you get up to people wanting to do renovation work or modeling work and, it's as hard it is as it was to sort of create that narrative where people would, where it would register with them. Uh, it, it basically, when it fell into place, mm-hmm. it just, you know, keep it simple, stupid. Yeah. You know, there, there was no need to, to complicate it by talking about a, you know, the, the, the website that was going to bring all of this together. Right. Well, if you're a national chain, you know, you're going to have a kick-ass website because yeah. you're going to have it. You have to, you know, I mean, that's part of the package. So I dropped all that in there. And if it gets brought up or if it's assumed, then, mm-hmm. you know, of course, then we can branch into that portion of the mall. Yeah. Keep it simple. You know, what's, what's been happening lately, and I don't know how long ago, but now when you buy appliances or electronics online, because you, you could buy that stuff on, on Amazon, like, right. hey, would you like installation with that? Mm-hmm. Right. That's Amazon Prime um, has a whole leg Amazon services where the, where they do that. Uh, I was actually involved in the pilot program for that nice. you know, years ago. Years ago. Yeah. But the problem with Amazon for, for pros and the pros that you can get from Howls or Home Advisor or mm-hmm. Angie's List or Thumbtack, you you name it. It's it's a it's a market that they've created. And you've got a, a huge percentage of those people that if you're as busy as I am, you don't need it. But of course, yeah. marketing effort, it's nice to have that. So, you know, we yeah. did actually so we could hang our hat on it. Yeah. But here's the, the, the network and Amazon. Amazon is the worst of all of them because mm. it's, it's an open co- competition thing. And, oh, yeah. You know, and anytime I'm, you have I, an open competition, then it's, it's all race to the bottom. Oh, it's, you know, and that's exactly it. You know, I, I pay my guys as, as much as I can. Yeah. I have gas, we have, you know, it's, it's a, it's a company with all the, all the stuff you find with it. Mm-hmm. I can't afford, I can't afford to go to your house and yeah. place the faucet your in your kitchen, your bath in anywhere uh, yeah. for $110. Yeah. It's, it's impossible. just, it's impossible for me. Mm-hmm. Um, and the smaller guys, you know, they do work on it. And the problem with Amazon in particular is you use their system exclusively. So you're, the only thing that you're building value on is, is being able to make low percentages because you show up, you're still a representative of Amazon no matter who you are. Mm. You're working for Amazon essentially. Abs- absolutely. So you're, I wasn't a big fan of that. Mm-hmm. Because it was basically, I'm here because this $200 job is going to make me you know, $8,000 when I, when I do your bathroom. 
Yeah. And cutting out the personal part of that and, and any sort of marketing or relationship building. Mm. No, I wasn't interested. Plus they wanted me to change the name of my company. Oh. Yeah, yeah, they yeah. did. They you, would can't have, you can't have a vet builder in your company or you can't have a vet in there because they, they want to market it to everybody. Yeah. I mean, it was, it was vetbuilder.com. They suggested doing a DBA is just vet builder. Well, mm. the reason why my company's name is vetbuilder.com is because yeah. I want people to go to vetbuilder.com. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> that was a carefully planned out and anticipated move. It had to be simple, quick, yeah. and something that maybe goes, oh, you know what? I can't remember that. Yeah, exactly. That's awesome, dude. So, um, you got you got a ton going on, man. I do, I do. And what keeps you motivated? I know one of the motivations is to go national mm -hmm. and figuring out. And I'm sure you've got all half the stuff figured out on what needs to be done. You know, I do, mm -hmm. and and that, I don't want to sound arrogant or anything like that. But the the high points are there. Mm -hmm. Okay, and even in the last six months, with being on podcasts and talking to people about social media, the high points are there, but the applications and the road have changed. Yeah. Uh, which is very, very exciting. And that keeps mm -hmm. me extremely motivated. Uh, I spend a lot of time reading and, and not books. I don't do books, but reading things online, Inc magazine, and just all kinds of little fun little articles mm -hmm. you know, that, that motivates me. Um, the fist bump, Hey bro, we got to get this thing done. Yeah. Um, that's see that doesn't resonate with me i'm not wired that way but i can see the value in it and seeing there's the difference you can you can not like something or something may not work for you but you you can still glean the value from it and say okay you know what this is this is what how this works and this is why but motivation um family uh my two boston terriers my um my friend network here you know, the, the real people that, <laughs> that are like, you know, down the street. Yeah. Uh, we've being able to connect that way and sort of seeing the results of, of leadership and small little pushes here and small little pushes there. It's mm. getting to this point where it's all starting to happen. Yeah. It's that, that, that in itself, just the fact that it, there's a, there's a ball rolling. I'm sure there's a number of influencers that I've talked to and, and have mm -hmm. relationships with that absolutely think I'm crazy. Yeah. Uh, but I'm not going to post. I don't generally post just for the sake of posting. Yeah. You got to have I, a. Absolutely. Find it. Yeah. You know, and, and I'm not, I'm not there to waste anybody's time. And, mm -hmm. and if I've got a weird question, I ask it because yeah. that's, that's how I am. You know, it, it's taken me a long time to get there. If I don't understand something, like say, for instance, perfect example, your resume. Yeah. Okay. I saw your resume. I looked at it and I had no clue what any of that is. Yeah. None. Mm -hmm. You know, and you have to respect, again, there's where you go back to respecting or recognizing. Yeah. We're in a completely different industry. And yet here we are talking about the same things. Exactly. And I there's, think there's that. There's... There's amazing, amazing things happening in this huge world, right? And and yes. we we all come from different parts and different like goes back to those experiences and our, you know, where what we are drawn to. Mm -hmm. There's always those things that connect us as being human beings, as you know <laughs> I call those yeah. the seven states of man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But, you know, you have to, you, we're, we're at the, at the bare bones. We're still, exactly. we're still, same. we're still the same. Mm -hmm. I mean, seven states of man, greed, you know, all of those things. Yeah. Or seven deadly sins, as most people call them. <laughs> we're, we're, we're still a comp we're still a company. We're still a, a world mm -hmm. that is greed driven. Oh yeah. Uh, because we, I mean, and that's it's the nature of men. Absolutely. And then, and then you have to realize, okay, well, I'm trying to understand the dynamics of this relationship, but at the same time, it's, you know, you're, yeah. you're, you kind of get lost. Yes, it's very true. Um, like, like this said, um, um, I can't remember, but 
the prophet Muhammad, he said, I don't know if he said it, but it says if, if you give a mountain of gold to the man in his one hand, he'll ask for another one for his other. Right. You know, it, that, that never goes away. No, it's, and that's a narrative that, that unfortunately fuels a lot of what we have going on nowadays. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm not going to, I'm not going to say I'm not a capitalist because, because I am. Yeah. I mean, you know, let's, let's, let's get that out early. <laughs> uh, but, you know, I think that, I think that along the way there, you have an opportunity to not be the guy that yells at you every day and yeah. try to work within, within your comfort zones or work within your, your abilities. Um, because we're still, we're still environment driven people. My, my experiences and, and my, you know, opinions or feelings are a direct reflection of my environment. And I think that when we start talking further about stuff like that, that it, it's the hypocrisy and the intolerance that is the, the, the part of the biggest problem. Yeah, that's, that's so true. Yeah. Because uh, at the end of the day, uh, we're all going to go back to reset back to um, your what's comfort in, zone. Yes, our comfort zone and what's influenced us mm-hmm. most of our lives. It's it's so powerful and, and uh, amazing. It just depends on what you what you take from it. Yeah, you exactly. you know I've worked a lot of really crappy jobs, but uh, I learned something from all of them. Yeah. And, and that's, that's it's not good, but <laughs> well, that's the key, right? You got to learn the good and the bad and tell the difference between them. I mean, a lot of people can't tell the difference after a very long time, but, <laughs> but it goes back to that environment. <laughs> their, back their environment that environment. Exactly. And, and, um, it's pretty interesting how, um, there's, there's something about, our internal system where anytime we do something bad, even as a young child, you feel it in inside your bones, like, no, that is wrong. And then it's when you start oppressing yourself, mm-hmm. which is going a totally different direction now. <laughs> it's when, when you start oppressing yourself where you're like, no, nah, nah, it's fine. Because we are the first oppressor. You know, we all, we all talk about, oh, there's oppression in the world. Mm-hmm. And there is, there is, there's a ton of it, but it yes. starts with Everywhere. self, right? It starts with the self. And when you start, when you can, when you, when you're okay with oppressing yourself, then, then it goes out to the world. Then you're like, all right, if I can oppress myself, I can oppress others. Mm-hmm. So, and, and that's what, that's where we see the world heading, unfortunately, but there's a ton, there's still Billions of people that are so much nice to be around, right? So down to earth, that are only looking for the good of you. It's, it's, it's not hard to find those people, and I think I found that one with you. You know, I'm I'm a pretty genuine guy mm-hmm. at, at at this point in my life. I mean, when whenever I've moved or whenever I've I've done different things, you you know, I I'm a firm believer on reinventing yourself, taking yeah. the good dropping what didn't work. I don't see that there's a lot of people that, that are that cognizant, cognizant, cognizant of what they're mm-hmm. doing. Um, but the, the, the real difference is, and we can swing this back. We can see, we can, I'm going to, I'm going to loop it back. Mm-hmm. When you're talking about your, your confidence. Yeah. Realizing that there's, there's confidence. You can have all kinds of different types of confidences, but when your life starts to actually, fall into place. Uh, people like Stephen Kuhn, Lane Ballone. I mean, I could go on and on and on. Mm-hmm. This, these are the people like you, you, when you listen to their stuff and you're like, okay, well this is cool. And then, you know, people, and not just them as, as influencers, but, but any, anybody, basically you start listening to what they're saying and they, you know, everyone calls it the epiphany, but at the same time, it's, I, I hate using that word because everyone does it. Yeah. This, the pieces start to fall in place. And with business, the processes were maybe not there, but I could see them. 
and the confidence of being able to, to walk into a house. And remember, you know, they called you to be there. They invited you into their home, which is, a, which is you know, that's, that's an honor and it should be an honor. But they invited you into your home because they wanted to talk to you about what you can do for them. Um, it's, it's all about solving a problem and circling back to someone like Stephen. Stephen, when I first met him, was giving a, a sort of a, a meeting where he was doing a, I'm trying to think of the word, he was a, a soft opening for a presentation he's going to be doing in, in Richmond or uh, someplace. Uh-huh. And the resounding portion of that was he was there to solve a problem. Okay. It wasn't, you asked, you ask me that if you want me to do this, this is where it is, you know, no, let's, let's solve the problem. Let's be the person that someone's going to go to, to have somebody figure it out. And I do that a lot <laughs> yeah. Yeah. because I don't know everything. So it's, you know, it's like I said before, I've gotten past the point in my life where my ego is, is what drives me. Now it's my curiosity. Yeah. And if I don't understand, you know, I, I don't care if what you think of me and I don't, I simply don't understand. And if you're confident enough that you're talking about it, well, you know, raise your hand, you know, there, there's never a stupid question. There are stupid questions, but, yes. but and yes, there are. Uh, <laughs> it's like saying the customer is always right. But you, you raise your hand and I say, you know, I don't understand that. And I don't need you to solve the problem for me or tell me what it is. Point me in the right direction. I'll go look. Yeah. And, and I, think people, I think people miss that. And, and plus people walking down the street wave, say hello to them. It's amazing how many people you say hello to that are just absolutely thrown back. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. And keep your number. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna ask for your number. That's true. What's, you know? what's really interesting is is depending on the different towns and different mm-hmm. cities. Yes, people have different behaviors. Like in New York, everybody's go 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 go. You, <laughs> you don't even have time to stop, say hi. But then you go someplace like Denver, Colorado, or uh, even even here in DC. Mm-hmm. There's different Easy, bad about that, bad, right? Yeah, it's it's yes. like let me just get out of your way, right? Um, it's really interesting. I haven't found a place where you can just stop and have a chat with somebody, or maybe I have. I I just can't remember right now. It's called the internet. Oh yeah, that's right. The <laughs> internet, you can you can find, and that's the that's the beautiful part about the internet, right? You can find people that like what you're doing, or mm-hmm find places where you know for sure okay I, I can go here and talk about all the camera equipment that i want right because that's the group i found mm-hmm. and, and so you can find these communities and these niches and um i always talk about this specific youtube channel it's called ants canada and it's it's basically talking about keeping ants in a in a terrarium in your house Mm-hmm. You have a whole, and, and this, when I first started looking at that, you know, they had 650,000 subscribers. Mm-hmm. Now they're up to probably 3 million subscribers on their channel. Yeah. And, and we're talking about people that, that put ants in their house. Yes. I mean, and they're watching them and they're, you know, these videos are like 11, 15 minutes long and they're talking about these ants and sure there's some parts that are sped up, but it's really interesting how you see ants living in, in a colony and whatnot i'm like wow people so you're into bugs i'm into bugs i just I mean, ran into ants, ants for some I mean, reason. <laughs> you know how do i was going to ask you how do people find out about a three million page views, visitor page ant thing and now i know that's how you know yeah exactly and, and that's exactly what brings your point right down to, to the nitty-gritty mm-hmm. um that's where it is you know, selling cars years ago, the guy, you know, you hear it all the time, there's an ass for every seat. Mm-hmm. And, <laughs> you know, it doesn't get any truer than that, especially yeah. when you go to the internet. Yeah. But, you know, having lived in Boston, I've lived in Boston, I've lived in New York City, mm-hmm. uh, Washington, D.C. Boston was, was I think, I, I liked Boston. New York City, of course, you can't say anything bad about it, but then yeah. D.C. I've always told people, DC, once you go there, it's, it's so sterile. 
there's very oh my god it, it is it is so sterile because all of these people in that environment are like that yeah uh, you know it's nothing like new york city where you go down the subway and there'd be people you know playing music and there mm-hmm. you know, places you could buy coffee same thing with boston you know yeah i used to over in harvard square i i worked over there back in the day and there was a group from peru that had the little pipes and the and the big uh, the drums and the the guitars. Yeah, and I would get off work early when days that I knew they were there mm-hmm. to go see them. Uh, you don't have that in DC. <laughs> yeah. No, we don't. <laughs> no, we don't. Because we don't have those systems in place. the 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 public transportation system is only designed in DC to bring you to DC and take you out of DC. And that's about it. That's it. Whereas in New York and Boston. They have multiple systems to take you from this place. You can jump on two different trains and go to the same direction. Mm-hmm. Here, you only have you got to take that one train. Otherwise, you're going you're going to um, Arlington Cemetery, right? <laughs> or you're going to yes. go back up to, uh, yeah. It's, it's it's pretty it's pretty crazy. It's it's very it's it's just it's boring. Yeah, it's boring. Well, what what what, what can what can we do? Uh, we we build our own. <laughs> Not <community>. go there. <laughs> Don't go there or build your own community. And well, you know what do big builders do? You know they build houses, and then yeah. you do that. You build a walkable community with some really cool houses around it, make it best in each location, and there you go. Yeah, you're done. And uh, and actually, a a company, uh, Federal Realty, does that really well all around the U.S. I'm sure you've heard of them. Yes. Um. They've got some nice, um, you know, open shopping communities where you can go visit the shop. No, there's, there's one in Leesburg mm-hmm. uh, where the Wegman sits. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it sits on 25 acres. It is absolutely packed yeah. to, to at least 24.9. But That's crazy. It, it's the, the thing is people now don't want to be in the cars and they don't want to, you know, everyone wants that small hometown feeling where there's still a community, but yeah. there's a price for that. Of course. And it's going to be price for that. You know, it's having lived in the big cities and now being in a town where there's 16,000 people, the dynamic change has been, it's, yeah. it's the twilight zone. It literally is a completely different world. It is. And, and it's all within the same world that we live in. Again, back to environment based personalities and, and experiences wow well that brings me to a my some of my questions that i ask and you know being in different environments we're all exposed to different things mm-hmm. and <clears throat> sometimes you're not able to participate in a hobby that you wish you got into so what was that one hobby for you my my number one hobby would <laughs> it's like I'm trying to I'm trying to go through the decades <laughs> and figure which which one, did it come back but no uh, that's easy for me uh, antique car restoration mm. period uh, I am a car guy I don't know anything about any sports and, and I can say that honestly but I, don't, I I don't do any of that I, I'm not wired that way. Um, mm-hmm not competitive that way either yeah well talking cars. about cars and restoration that's that's a pretty fresh topic in my head so mm-hmm. I, was, uh, I was surfing netflix yesterday and i ran into this show called hyperdrive mm-hmm. where they bring people from all over the world that have been racing and that that have been car enthusiasts and they come and they try their hand on this very different uh, racetrack mm-hmm. you have to go through like five different checkpoints or four different checkpoints where, and there, there's this one guy, he, he's got a 1960s van, which, which started out as a 64 horsepower car, but he's like, yeah, or 25 horsepower. And he's like, you know, I got my numbers mixed up. That's okay. I have a car with 40 horsepower. So I'll <laughs> <laughs> I can definitely relate to where and this he, may be going. And he's like, he's 
changed everything out now that this car now outputs like 600 horses. Yes, yeah, I don't want that. And he's right. So he's racing that car, right? But right. unfortunately, he kept missing all the turns. So his <laughs> like he he basically disqualified himself himself, even though this van looks like a sleeper, you know, he's like, oh, this is a it's really old van. What is this going to do? And he's like smoking and rocking it out of every turn, but he's he's also not pay, able to pay attention to the racetrack. So he's right. making the turn. So that was really interesting to watch. And I was like, oh my God, this is very, <laughs> very interesting. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm more classics. I'm a, yeah. a huge Ferrari guy. I'm a huge Porsche guy. Mm -hmm. um, Anything with with four wheels essentially is you know I I'll find something that I like about it. You might you might enjoy this show just even if you just have to watch one episode. It was pretty interesting. There's this uh, there's this guy bringing in a Lamborghini Huracan, which is all wheel drive. And you're mm -hmm. like, how the heck is he gonna drift that car? Right. And Turn the control off. What's that? Turn the traction control off. It's all wheel drive. Yeah, but it's also it's also a mid engine with a big power plant. <laughs> that's true. That's true. Throw your foot on it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, right. and the drifting car racing. I'm not into any of that. No, me neither. Unless it's it, Mil Milia or something like that, where they take the classics and and go the old racetrack or race mm, rallies. Yeah, that, those would be pretty cool to see. Yeah, but that was that was my my <laughs> ultimate goal. Behind, I wanted to be a fighter pilot when I was a kid, but I, mm -hmm. I don't have the math aptitude for that. Um, I just wanted to be cool flying yeah. jet. Evidently, there's more to that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, was you know, that everyone, because of Top Gun? You know, it. No, because no. I, I I spent a lot of time um, in Little Creek down in Virginia Beach, where there okay. were cats flying around and. Mm. and stuff. I've always been enamored by uh, ships and airplanes. Nice. Especially old World War II vintage ships and uh, World War II era planes. Another side side hobby. Nice. Yeah. That's, that's really cool. All right. Well, and and I, I think you've restored a car, right? In, I in did. Going into that hobby. So you you actually started it. Mm -hmm. started no, I started it, I think, May 25th and ended it uh, the end of uh june i believe okay 13 weeks okay nice for, for a cosmetic well but but the car was in good shape to begin with so there was no yeah. well this was cosmetic and, and some general cleaning up and maintenance but it still went from a very flat car to a very shiny car nice very cool i think so, so. yeah no that's awesome I'll have, I'll have to come check it out absolutely i'll let you drive it too and let, can you drive a stick oh yeah yeah okay well, then you can drive it. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I might teach you how to drive a stick on that thing. <laughs> no, no, no. It's, you, you don't want to do that. Uh, no. My brother had a 240SX, and, and uh, he changed out the engine on that car, and that thing was, whew. Yeah. It was a fast car. Yeah, All right. Speed doesn't do it. I don't speed have the berries anymore. Like, I'm too old. Be able to get it out. Get to right. point, one, point A to point B, right? Stylishly. Stylishly. All right. What is your favorite movie or TV show? Uh, that's easy. Right now it is Star Trek Discovery. Oh my and God. It will be Picard when that happens. Yeah. Um, follow up would be Yellowstone. And have you, have you seen Pennyworth yet? I have not seen Pennyworth. Pennyworth is the backstory on Alfred Pennyworth, uh, the butler to Batman. Oh. And it's a show. It's first off, it's, it's, same thing with Discovery. It is a visually pleasing show. Very they, visually pleasing. Yeah, but Star Trek Discovery, it is the only show that I will watch that I'm, I don't have my iPad or something in my lap doing something else. Yeah, that show was very intriguing. Oh, my God. And it's, and it's so cool to look at. Mm -hmm. uh, the actors, the guy that they got to play Pike. Oh, my God. He's good. Uh, Enterprise. I mean, yeah. See, I didn't want to watch it initially. Mm -hmm. And that was I'm a I'm a big Starship fan. <laughs> I, you know, I like the spaceships, and uh, I didn't like I didn't like the the shape of the Discovery. <laughs> <laughs> so it wasn't aesthetically pleasing to me. Sure, 
but uh, yeah, well, as soon as we did it, and it wasn't the the subscription thing either. No, because it took me it forever is, to get into it as well. Um, I was because I, 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 it I took you forever to get into it. Well, when it first came out, I was like, okay, uh, this is not moving fast enough for me, and maybe right. I just started watching way too late in the day, and I'd fallen asleep. And maybe I'm gonna unfriend you now. No, I I, I did binge watch all of it. So. <laughs> There's no well, way you're unfriending me. <laughs> I, I've, I've, I've taken it a point further. I have now started watching Star Trek: Next Generation, which nice. you know, I watched when I was that age. Yeah, but I, you know, we we didn't record things back in those days. So if you missed, you just didn't see it. You didn't see it. <laughs> like, oh, <look> that. <laughs> so I watch it 15 minutes at a time. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Um, talking about old TV shows, uh, I got into Doctor Who uh, way back, um, probably a few years ago. And I was like, oh, let me go to the original 1960s. And I was like, wow. Yeah, it was, it was, I'm going to have a TARDIS someplace. Yeah, exactly. Someplace. <laughs> you know, and my my doctor was the same doctor. Oh, God, if you hadn't asked me, I could have told you. But <laughs> the same doctor around the same time as Dukes of Hazard. So, okay. and that was on, Doctor Who was on PBS back in those days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was so, the curly-haired guy with the, uh, with the long scarf. I would not know his name. Yeah, uh, I evidently don't, so... Yeah. <laughs> But um, it was it was uh, so since I did not grow up in the U.S. Mm -hmm. before I was twenty, um, I didn't get to see any of these TV shows um, in their prime. Mm -hmm. But it was really good catching up later in my life. Oh, but, absolutely! And, and it's all available now. It's everything's available everywhere. It's it's like yeah, it's, uh, it's so weird. I don't watch enough TV to get through it. Yeah, but I know it's there. <laughs> it's it's there. Um, I was watching Martin Scorsese talk about uh, filmmaking and he's like, you know, growing up, you only had access to that era of films. But today yes. you can watch 1920s stuff. You can watch 1960s. You can watch something that just released yesterday. Mm -hmm. It's freaking amazing. We have access to so much stuff. And in, in that note, what is your, f what movie would you choose if you got to play a character in it. Oh, um, any, any March Brothers movie. And you'd be the March Brothers? Yeah, any, any of them. Awesome. Animal Crackers, Night the Opera, it could be just any, anything. And it would and just be in the background. I don't, I don't even have to have a speaking role. Well, you have to, because that's what the question is. Well, I was, <laughs> I was trying to be humble, but if I, but if I, but if I have to, you know, I'd, I'd, I'd go up there with Captain Spaulding and, and sing a song. There you go. Or Dr. Hackenbush. <laughs> <laughs> Very cool. I'm uh, not really into that. Into that. Not into that? Okay. Well, talk about movies. Um, for the past 10 years, we've had some of the most um, colorful and most vivid superhero movies to date. Mm -hmm. Who would be your favorite superhero, if not from these movies or overall? I mean, we've, we've had comics for for some time now. Mm -hmm. Well, once you come to my house, you'll 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 see where this this is like a perfect question for me. I am Batman, uh, and that is from when I was a little kid. My mom always used to make me a little Batman cape that I ran around in. So it's it's a long time issue. Yeah. Uh, but you, you have to look at the from a movie standpoint. Now, I've always liked the, the DC offerings because I, I think they're different. Yeah. But Marvel definitely does it better. Mm -hmm. they, they, they just do the colors. The It's just everything is just a fantastic visual experience. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I have to say that. But, I you know, I liked Justice League. I liked, their, I liked the Superman. Yeah. <clears throat> the original Superman mm -hmm. was good. And I actually liked... I did like uh, what's his face as Batman, Ben Affleck. Ben Affleck, he did a pretty good. He did well. He's, his costume was very, very close to the Frank Miller Dark Knight. Story. It is. It is. Yeah. You know, and there was a lot of you could if you knew if you know both of the stories, it was cool that there was certain you know little canon drops 
uh, that that lended to to where the influence of that was. Oh, interesting. What what I liked about Ben Affleck's Batman is that he was a very uh, like you could tell this is Bruce Wayne. He's not, you know, it's, like he played the part. Like he knows he's Batman, and he's mm-hmm. not, and he's like the serious dude. Well, he has to be, yeah. you know. And not to take from the Nolan Batman because no, I no. I did like that too. But you know, you from all of those movies, and this is what does bother me about superhero movies is why do they always have to give you the backstory? Okay. We already um, know it. <laughs> you know, if you're watching Batman, you already know how he became Batman. And if exactly. you don't, it doesn't need 45 minutes of the movie. No. It just no. doesn't. Uh, and, and that's where my biggest complaint with a lot of these superhero movies are. Mm-hmm. Uh, but have you seen Shazam? I have. It's fun. It was I mean, fun. That was, you know, that was just a fun movie. It's a really fun movie. Yeah. I mean, they it's Disney. <laughs> Disney has always made good movies, and, no, and they're stopping. It's not Disney, though. What do you mean? They're they're owned by Disney Studios. Shazam. Uh, no, the the Avengers and stuff. Yeah, Avengers does, but Shazam is not. Yeah, that, that I didn't know. Yeah, yeah Shazam oh, no, is because it's because that's in the same one as uh, that's still DC. Yeah, yeah, that's DC, and 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 in the end, you you see uh, Superman standing next to Shazam as. <laughs> right. And, you know, and, uh, there's no Henry Cavall though. <laughs> no, no, no Henry Cavall. Unfortunately, he had to step away. Um, yeah. There's, there's so much happening there. It's, it's insane. Right. Yeah, I don't. I don't. Other than that, we, I, I don't watch a ton of movies. Yeah. Um, no. No. I do, it's got to be. My wife hates me because we'll, we've taped. I've got probably four movies taped, like the Mister Rogers story. That's there. Uh, yeah. Uh, Stan and Ollie's there. But I have to be in a mood to watch these things. Yeah, you, you, it's it, it's got to be. The, I have to have the mood, or I want to. Or it's because gonna... because dude, you are in your mind building vetbuilder.com. Yeah, the national brand, and that part does not turn off ever. It's and that's why you got to have be, you got to be in the mood. Yeah, it doesn't. It doesn't. You know, it doesn't turn off. But you know, doesn't everyone say that? the guys that sell t-shirts, the guys that, that sell coffee or, or whatever it is that they're doing, everyone says that, you know, everyone says, Oh my God. But you know, when, when, when you're going through something big, if you're not thinking, if it's not on your mind, you're not trying to think about how you could do something better. Um, it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. And and I, and I firmly believe that. I mean, some people may argue with me on that, but I, but no, I'm steadfast in that. It's got to be in front of your mind. Absolutely. For yeah. Awesome man. Last yeah. funky question. Uh huh. <laughs> if you were a board game, what would it be? It would be Operation. Operation. Nice. Because mm-hmm. it's it's something that that just just like instantly scares the shit out of you. Yeah. And you have to go back and you have to get better at it so it yeah. doesn't scare the shit out of you. You know, one thing that I wanted to bring back and, and I totally forgot was um, when you're building a business, when mm-hmm. you're building a brand, whatever it is that you're doing, um, the, the, the entire reason I, I do these episodes and interviews is, is to see that, the far, you know, all the things that go in it mm-hmm. and how... And I, I say how my my favorite scene in any movie um, is when Iron Man is building his first suit. All yeah, things, what was that? It was so amazing. It's like, what? This guy's in the cave. He's building an arc reactor. <laughs> yeah. Like, who does that? Who does that? Exactly, right? You got to have that compounded experience into how things work right i mean and that's what he was a child prodigy because he keep tinkering with stuff and Mm -hmm. that's where you and i are too right we over over the past four decades that we've been around we've collected experiences from different places that we worked different Mm -hmm. beauties that we did and now we're putting all those things together it's fun doing it and which is great which is beautiful you know, it is. It's it's also daunting. It's also confusing. It's all mm-hmm. airy. Uh, you know, I used to tell people that 
you know, I, I'm going to be on the cover of Time Magazine. Yes. That. I'm going to be on the cover of Forbes Magazine. Mm. And having that kind of confidence, being able to go between, you know, absolutely arrogant and, you know, no one wants to talk to you because you're condescending. But yeah. But having, but having that confidence, I, I find that people, there's not a lot of people that can handle that in a, in a way that it relates to them or, or it resonates with them. Yeah. Um, you know, cause I, I don't talk to a lot of people that aspire to, to having a national brand and being at my level, the confidence is fantastic, blah, blah, blah. But man, I wake up some days and I'm just like, Oh God, I'm done with this. Yeah. You know, I don't want to do this anymore. And then there's the, the fact that, you know, I pay my guys over $50,000 a year and exactly. we've got a $20,000. We have to make $20,000 a month to keep it going. Yeah. And, you know, that's hard at times. It there is. Were, and people don't talk about that. You hear a lot of people talking about how successful they have been. And they're trying to sell you something that they, they think, even without knowing you at all, exactly. or even looking yeah, at your Facebook yeah. page, but they're going to fix something that's broke. Yeah. Some of us work within the confines of being broke. In fact, that's part of what drives them and yeah. gives, them, gives them that gut feeling. I'm not saying broke like, like really bad broke. But exactly. No, no, no. <laughs> absolutely. And I think that's a, the being at this level and talking to people, I would rather hear about people that are in the same boat. I, w- I want to know a guy that just went over six figures. Yeah. You know, I yeah. have a buddy that's just made it to a million dollars. That's uh, amazing. Of, of, he does roofing work in Texas. Yeah. Um, I mean, how cool is that? It's I really mean, cool. And, I've, and, I've, and I haven't been, we're not great, great friends, but we talk back and forth, but yeah. you, can, you can see that progression. You know, someone exactly. like Donald Dodson, the same thing. <laughs> you see that development as, you know, these people in your tribe. And uh, I mean, I know a guy that, that does jewelry like in Taiwan. That's crazy. It is. Greg's and Greg's a freaking awesome guy. Yeah. But being being in that segment, you know, everyone everyone tells, oh, you know, we'll make it to six figures. Well, I I did six figures in six months, so that's that's right. never been my problem. The yeah. Lead, yeah. Not my problem. Um, business credit, figuring out how to get more vans, figuring out, you know, who's going to do my website, how I want my website done. Yeah. And, yeah. You know, I'm very, very picky and I already have a very good idea of what I want because I've done the research. Nice. Um, but finding people that, that jump on board like Chris McPhee with Green Beret Media, and he's the guy I, I suggested you talking to. Yeah. You know, we sit down and we talk about goals and we talk about, okay, this is what we want to do. You know, then I've got the guy in town, William, William Huck, who's got CNC frozen treats. You know, he's a mom and pop's ice cream store. And he's, and you know, some people don't get it <laughs> is, you know, he is a character and his brand is entertaining. People go to go there, get really good ice cream and they get a show. Nice. I'm sorry. I did. I know. So Michael, <laughs> <I can. laughs> with Mr. Woodlow, we can talk forever and the day is never ending. No. Uh, but this was really great talking. So people could find you on bedbuilder.com when that's up. Yes, you can go to vetbuilder.com. The site's currently down, so you want to go on my Facebook page. Uh, awesome. On Facebook. Yeah, we're, we're doing a lot of updates. Fantastic. Yeah. Well, when the podcast episode goes live, I'll make sure to include all of the links to connect with you on the, on the show notes. And, dude, it was really awesome to Thank get you. to talk to you again. We'll, we'll definitely have to touch base again and, and see what's happening. Yeah. See, I said absolutely three times. Absolutely, man. <laughs> All, right. Hey, we gotta go. <laughs> All right, man. Take care. You too. Bye. Bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to listen to this episode on Hacks and Hobbies. We absolutely appreciate your contribution. You can find additional notes on hacksandhobbies.com. Please share the podcast with your friends and tell them what you learned about our guest today.